Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the channel. Thanks, as always, for stopping by and hanging out for a few. So this intro is going to be pretty short. I'm going to cut this one real short because the main video is a little bit longer. As I've said recently on channel, I'm doing a new class on 3D modeling with Metashape and drones, and the class is still coming together. I've been getting distracted over the past couple weeks with client work, as you can see up on the screen over here. I've been... Um, I've been doing a lot of video work and still photography work and some construction site work. So that's been keeping me super busy and keeping me from finishing up the end of the class. With that said, I wanted to show you one of the lectures from the class. So not only are we talking about 3D modeling with drones and Metashape, we do cover several of the capture applications in the class as well. So I wanted to show you one of those. So we're going to take a look at MapPilot and we're gonna walk through the basic features of MapPilot. Now I've got more information on this channel and I've done more work with MapPilot here, but not on this level. So I just wanted to show you one of the lectures that will help you get familiar with MapPilot from the class and hopefully get you interested when I do launch that, which should be very soon. I'm gonna be dedicating a lot of today to getting the last couple of lectures set where I want them and then getting ready to announce the launch. So. Right now, the course is looking to be about five hours long, and it will be getting added to. All right, like I said, I'm keeping this short. So the next part of this video is a walkthrough of Maps Made Easy's Map Pilot. It's one of the applications I use to capture aerial data and images for doing models afterward. So the bigger part of the class, of course, is going to be about building those models and working with Metashape and Metashape Pro and quickly talking about some of the other modeling programs out there. But we need to capture our data, and I know that people who are taking the class would like to see how you build out a plan for doing your 3D model with one of these capture apps. So, okay, let's get away from me on screen, and let's go take a look at MapPilot together and get an idea of what the lectures are going to be like on the new course. Thanks again for stopping by, and we'll see you on the next video really soon unless I get too busy again, which happens. All right, everyone, thanks. As we mentioned in the previous lecture, there are several capture applications out there, and we're gonna start out with MapPilot because MapPilot is one of the most well-known capture applications. It works very well for doing 2D and 3D modeling. So what we're looking at right now is Map Pilot by Maps Made Easy, and we're going to jump right into this and give you the brief overview of how you set up a mission. So I'm going to create a new mission. So I just tapped on create a new mission, and we get a notification automated flight has an increased re uh, risk of aircraft loss. Yes, it does. I'm going to say OK to that, and it has detected the Mavic 2 Pro. So. It actually knows where I am right now, and it's showing off some previous models that I've laid out with MapPilot. And actually, I don't want that one showing up here, so I'm going to the upper left corner here and arrowing back really quick. And we're going to go look at the mission management, and basically we're just going to get rid of the old missions because we don't need them right now. And as you can see, we can label these as well. So I'm just going to clear these out really quickly. And we're going to start from scratch. So that's probably where you're starting from. So I'm going to create that new mission again. Once again, the Mavic 2 Pro is detected because some of the features for laying out these missions, you actually need your drone turned on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide up here to an area that we're using extensively for this course. And what I would like to do is make a new mission. So I'm just going to do a double tap and purple takeoff point is for flight path. Okay, what I want to do here is not happening. So since I'm connected to the drone, it's giving me a harder time. But um, usually you double tap and it gives you a purple dot of where you're planning on flying from. I'm going to do a single tap and hold and you will see that yellowy orange waypoint. I'm going to do a second tap and hold. And we're defining the area that we would like to fly. So there's my third tap and hold. And now, in the center points of these areas, you see another smaller orangey yellow dot. If you click on it and drag it, 
there we go. So now I am setting up the area that I would like to fly. So it's that simple. You actually just tap and hold and you can define your flight areas. Now on the left hand side, we do have several tools and on the top bar, we also have several tools. So let's take a look, left hand side, top button, what is this telling us? So the area that I would like to map is 22.61 acres. My flight distance would be 5 minutes and 40 seconds approximately. The max speed, which is being determined by map pilot, is going to be 10.4 miles an hour. And it's suggesting the duration of this was going to be 32 minutes long. And that's based on some other settings. So we need to go and deal with those settings. And as we change things, we can come back and look at the information in this first button. Second button is pretty straightforward. It's uh, the garbage can, so you can stop using this. Third one, our zoom level or our altitude. And right now I have it set to 148 feet, and there's a reason for that. Um, the area that I'm flying, this defined area, is within five miles of an airport. And so I have to utilize the Lance system, the low altitude uh, notification system. And I cannot fly above 150 feet in this area which means we're ending up taking more photos. The higher up that the drone goes, uh, the fewer photos we need to take since we're at a lower elevation above ground level to accomplish this area. It's suggesting is going to take two batteries, which is an awful lot of batteries. So we can find ways to reduce this, but we might not want to. The final button on the bottom left we can save this mission. We can go from miles to kilometers, so we can make that switch. And I'd rather do uh, feet and miles than, uh, than the metric system right now. So that's what's going on on the left-hand side. Looks like we've got a, um, a uh, two-battery mission, but this shouldn't be a two-battery mission. Let's go tap on the upper bar. So I'm just tapping on the upper bar. And we can do a couple of things to, um, to reduce um, our time in the air for this small of an area. Because we're flying so low, that is one of our problems. But number one, our overlap, so how the photos overlap each other, dictates in part how many passes we're going to have to do. Now, for this particular area, there's not a lot going on. There's some new houses being built. There's not a lot of trees. There's not a lot of elevation change. So, for the overlap, I'm actually going to reduce this to 60%, and you can see that MapPilot gives you a message. 90% is very detailed, heavy trees, 80% terrain, structure, trees, water, corn, 70% um, flat areas with few trees, and 60% not recommended, but I've already tested this previously, and in the case of this construction site, 60% is fine, so I'm going to reduce the overlap across and forward and backward to 60% and 60%. I'm going to tap overlap again and I'm just going to slide that bar up. I'm going to go look at the left hand side and that first area 22.61 acres still. Uh, flight distance is now 4.52 miles. Max speed is going to be 13.8 miles per hour. Duration of this flight is going to be 21 minutes now so we've reduced some of that time and batteries are going to be two batteries. So it's going to force me to bring the drone in and map pilot actually automatically brings the drone back to you based on another setting in this upper area. So if you're looking at this upper toolbar, second row, um, one over from the right hand side, we've got our max time. So that max time, we can actually plug that in and tell it I feel comfortable flying my batteries up to 18 minutes and then I'd like to have it come back and uh, land. So in this case right now, I'm satisfied with 18 minutes and 25 seconds of flight time. Now, other things that we have in here, up on the top, when we're connected to the drone, which is why I'm connected to the drone for this video, we can turn the simulator on to simulate the flight to show us how this flight path's gonna work out. We can also utilize terrain aware. If we've got some crazy changing terrain, um, we can have map pilot change the elevation above ground based on the terrain. We've got our active connect, and then we have different mission types. We have normal missions, which in this case are basically flying south to north, north to south. So 
it's going in the direction that the drone is going in. The camera is going to be pointing in the direction that the drone is pointed in. We can change it from a normal mission to a grid mission where we're going to go north, south, and east and west. So that's going to give us a lot of coverage. But if we pop this button down here, we're now up to 40 minutes and 30 seconds of flight time and three batteries. That's a lot of batteries to go through. As I said before, our limiting factor is the elevation we're flying at, below 150 feet. Because we're so low, we're going to need more passes. If this was in a 250 foot above ground level area, that would make a huge difference. Let's see. So let's say that it was legal, which it's not. So I would not fly this mission because it's not legal to fly at 200 feet. Here it is legal to fly at 150. But when we change the altitude of the drone, we change our time flying. So from three batteries to two batteries, now we're back to normal mission. And when we take a look at normal mission, we're now on one battery. We're doing 3.09 miles with a max speed of 18.7 miles per hour. So Map Pilot makes adjustments for us based on our elevation, based on our overlap, and based on what mission type we are using. So you'll want to spend some more time on Map Pilot yourself to learn about all the features and to do some test flying. So by the way, we have a couple other items here. So often when we're doing 3D models of construction sites and locations like that, we've got the camera pointed straight down at the ground. But it's always recommended by many folks to actually have your gimbal tilted just slightly. So instead of 90 degrees down, we like to set it to about 70 degrees. That way we get building edge detail and we get details on the sides of structures and items. So right now when I tap the camera control, we have auto exposure set up. So Map Pilot and the drone are going to make decisions about our exposure. Exposure time, we could actually change that if we want to. Focus to infinity, we could change that if we want to in here. Uh, white balance for shooting, we can change that if we want to in here. And finally, the angle, the nadir. So I'm going to click that, and instead of zero here, I want it angled at 20 degrees. Now in other applications, this will show as a negative 20 instead of a positive 20, but for some reason, Map Pilot decided to call this zero degrees. So zero degrees for them is straight down. For other applications, straight down is 90 degrees. Who knows why, but there's some differences between them. So if I wanted to put an angle on this flight, I could come in here under the camera controls, go over to angle nadir, and set this to 20, because 20 degrees off. So like I said, with other applications, they call this 90 degrees, and they usually call it negative 90 degrees, and when you change it by 20 degrees, it's a negative 70 degrees instead of negative 90. You can shoot straight down. I would suggest actually trying both with the application and seeing what you prefer. Now, once we're actually ready with the mission on the right hand side, we can hit that fly button. And first of all, first of all I'm gonna turn the simulator on. So the simulator has been turned on. And on the right hand side now, upper right corner, there's an airplane button. So we can upload the mission. And so here we go. Would you like to adjust the elevations to account for terrain changes? No, thank you. And the mission upload is starting. So it actually uploads the mission to your drone. And then it wants you to inspect that blue path. And now, upper right hand corner, uh, we've got a stop button, we've got a home button, and we've got a start button. So we can hit the start button and it will actually simulate the flight for us. So the drone is not flying. The drone is here in my office with me. You might hear its fan running in the background. So the drone is showing what it would do um, if it was actually flying this mission. So you remember I reset the altitude on this. And on the right hand side, we have distance flown, zero miles, speed, 6.7 miles per hour. It's getting itself to its altitude to fly. And now it is actually performing its flight. And we don't really see much of anything going on because it's not really performing a flight at all. Okay, so you can simulate the drone flight only when you're connected to the drone. I would suggest not simulating outside and I've actually taken the props out of my drone. 
for this demonstration. When we're done, we can actually stop this mission. But if I hit the airplane button, so it is simulating the flight. It's telling me the range is how many feet from me. But I can stop this simulation. So I have now stopped the simulation. And I could hit continue the simulation, or I can just have it come back to the home point, which I'm going to do to end the simulation. And this is so realistic that we've got the beeping from my DJI controller. So that's a little annoying. I do apologize for that. But this simulation is pretty spot on. So this is a brief and fast overview to using MapPilot by uh, Maps Made Easy.